Thank you, Elaine Cladis and hardworking committee for the invitation to represent the 2004, 2020, 20, however you say that, St. Catherine staff and offer some words in honor of our beloved Father Lou. During those 16 years, what are you, Father Lou? I want to see your face. There you go. <laughs> um, during those 16 years, along with our clergy, I was the only full-time staff. And given my responsibilities both in the office and as the head chanter of this parish, I was basically Father Lou's shadow for over a decade and a half. As I'm sure most of you know by now, Father Lou's impact on my personal life is tremendous. He, along with my favorite parish council president, John Yeras, hi John, love you big, said the greatest yes of my life when I was looking for a way to stay in the US and I had literally nowhere to go after my two years volunteering with AmeriCorps. And although this is not a speech about my personal life, there is simply no way I could not mention that. Why? Because in as much as Father Lou offered me a job, he offered me way more than that. First and foremost, the priceless gift of his unconditional love and kindness, along with the priceless gift of a loving, strong, and united community built by the grace of God and, and with his prayers, perseverance, and the incredible gift of pastoral care that we all know is at the heart of his ministry. But throughout all these years, I witnessed my personal miracle multiplied by a thousand and more before my eyes. Along with his own broken heart, yes, our priests have crosses to bear as well, he offered in humility his imperfect and mere two fish and five loaves to our loving Lord. And our Lord did not disappoint in multiplying those gifts. What I thought was given uniquely to me by Father Lou was abundantly offered to each and every person that walked through our doors. He would often say to our staff, the moment you walk through those doors, you become co-ministers with me to our parishioners. Working together in such close quarters for so long, you learn a lot about each other. We all, of course, had our quirks and strengths and weaknesses and temperaments, our ups and downs, our good days, our bad days, our efficient days, and days when nothing turned out the way we wanted. In the context of this level of intimacy, which, by the way, means into me, you see, there is opportunity for huge impact on one another. And boy, did you leave a mark upon our hearts, dear Father Lou. Parents, you might be familiar with a poem when you thought I wasn't looking, written from the perspective of a child. I will quote some of the verses here, <clears throat> And then I will continue with some things that will stay with us forever and that made a huge impact on all of us, lucky enough to have a Father Lou in our lives. The original poem goes something like this. A child speaking to his parents. When you thought I wasn't looking, I saw you hang my first painting on the refrigerator and I wanted to paint another one. When you thought I wasn't looking, I saw you feed a stray cat, and I thought it was good to be kind to animals. When you thought I wasn't looking, I heard you say a prayer, and I believed that there was a God to talk to. When you thought I wasn't looking, I saw tears come from your eyes, and I learned that some things hurt, and it's okay to cry. And this is to you, dear Father Lou, Ooh, God help me. Ooh. When you thought we weren't looking, we saw you take off your wedding band before entering the altar to serve a liturgy. And we understood who is the Lord and master of your life and that we should put God first. 
When you thought I wasn't looking, I watched you sob next to me in court with your gut literally shaking with every sob when one of our parishioners' life was in danger because of a horrific accident. And I understood what it means to walk in the footsteps of Christ, whose splachna, whose guts, were moved to compassion each time he encountered our suffering. When you thought I wasn't looking, I watched you lovingly place the photograph of our sweet four-year-old Annie Samaras, who passed away from brain cancer, and many other photographs, or people who were struggling under the holy tabernacle in the altar. And I understood that love is truly stronger than death, and that God's love will conquer all sorrow. Year in and year out, as we change that altar table, According to the liturgical season, all these pictures were held and moved back and forth under the Holy Tabernacle as precious relics, as if carrying the hearts of those people in the palm of your hand and placing them in God's hands. When you thought we weren't looking, we saw you cry with us in confession, and we understood that compassion and co-suffering can lighten the burdens of life. When you thought we weren't looking, we watched you patiently and kindly handle all kinds of difficult situations and people, and we understood that the human heart and its salvation has priority over anything. When you thought we were not looking, we saw the numbers of the parishioners, the budget, the square footage, and the beauty of this building more than double under your leadership while keeping the peace in the community. And we understood that the best strategy for success is yes, preparation and hard work, but first and foremost, authentic love and boats of patience and prayers. Marsha, when you thought we were not looking, we saw Father Lou come to a service bright and early after being by someone's bed all night. And we understood that everything good and noble is built on tremendous sacrifice, and that you were and will always be right there with the Almighty God himself behind every success attributed to Father Lou. We watched you be one of us, the real deal, fun and hardworking and involved, and learned that esteem is not earned by titles, but by being an authentic human being and seeking to serve and love first. Father Lou, when you thought we were not looking, every time you came into the office, no matter how busy, no matter how stressed, or whatever weekly, daily, personal, or parish difficulties we're dealing with, no matter how annoyed we were sometimes with each other, we saw you always, and I mean literally always, even if you were on a phone call with God, stop by each of our office to say hello, give us your blessing, a hug and a kiss, and we felt God's love a little closer to us. When we thought you were not, we were not looking, we watched you deal kindly and compassionately and pastorally with every single new young priest you had to train, and we understood that leadership comes with tremendous responsibility, and even more so when training a soul who would be in charge of other souls. When you thought we were not looking, we watched you explain time and time again the sacraments, making everyone feel included and welcomed in the most authentic way possible. We watched you rejoice with those who were rejoicing and suffer with those who were suffering, offering your support and prayers in person or over the phone. And we understood a little bit better and in a more concrete way, the mystery of the incarnation and the power and gift of a loving presence. In the midst of our sorrows and suffering, in this imperfect and crazy and oftentimes painful life, you were for us and will continue to be for many a source, a source of strength, of love, pointing us first and foremost through your actions and then through any fancy sermons towards God's love and the understanding 
that if God is for us, nobody can be against us. We love you both dearly and we pray that the kindness you showed us will be returned to you a thousandfold by our abundantly gracious Lord. When you thought we were not looking, we looked. And we wanted to say thank you for all the things we saw and felt when you thought we were not looking. We love you.